So today's uh, lecture is on uh, the generative adversarial networks. Um, uh, I have been already introduced. I am Professor Sudha from School of Computing uh, from Sastra uh, University, Tanjavur. And uh, uh, this is my brief uh, profile. I have already, uh, it is given to you. So I have my education from uh, IIT Gauhati and IIT Madras and my bachelor's from Madurai Comrade University. And I have uh, the work experience both in academics as well as industry. Uh, so I have around 10 years, uh, more than 10 years of uh, uh, experience in academics and around five years of experience in uh, industrial R&D. Uh, it is in XMOS semiconductors and uh, Tata LXC. And currently I am the professor here. So what are GANs? GAN is Generative Adversarial Network. So from the name itself, you can make out uh, something it generates. So let us see what it generates. It can generate image largely, uh, but uh, it need not be image or uh, it can be other data also. And it is a generative adversarial network. Adversarial in the sense uh, it is uh, uh, something is fighting against each other. So that is the, uh, you must have heard of in AI, you must have heard of this adversarial search um, uh, where uh, one against the other it goes. So it is a system of two neural networks competing against each other. And it is introduced by Eon Goodfellow in 2014. And it, uh, you can learn, it can learn to generate new samples uh, that is similar to the training data. So as a neural network, it will be trained with some uh, um, particular data and uh, uh, similar to that data, we get new samples. And it can also translate the samples. That is one important uh, uh, property of the GAN. So the basic GAN looks like this. It has a generator and a discriminator. And uh, I have already told you there are two neural networks. One network is called generator and the other one is called discriminator. So ge generator will generate the new samples and discriminator will try to discriminate between the generated sample and the original trained sample. So it will output uh, as real or fake. So if the original training sample is given, it is uh, real data. And if the generated data is given, it is a fake data. And generator um, in the basic GAN, the generator will take as input the random noise. So once uh, the network, the generated network is trained uh, with a particular data set, here uh, you can see uh, some numbers. So if it is uh, trained with the numbers, uh, then when a random noise is given, it will give new numbers. The same numbers only, but uh, it will be a new sample. So uh, you can easily use this for data augmentation purpose. So because uh, when we have uh, very few data in hand um, for training. So we can use this GAN for training this and then get uh, new samples. Uh, those are the augmented data. So when it comes to the generator, before and after training, it looks like this. So before training, if you are feeding the random uh, noise, random noise, you can call it as a latent sample. So when it is given to the generator, then you will get a generated image, which is so, so confusing and you cannot find any pattern out of it. And when after training the generator, uh, suppose if this is uh, uh, trained with this handwritten data set, then uh, uh, after training, it will generate some image like this. This is more reasonable image. <coughs> and discriminator. 
discriminator is nothing but a classifier so it will output either one or zero so one means it is real data whatever input given is the real data and uh, uh, zero means whatever input given is the fake data so train the discriminator with both data set and the generated image so in the case of discriminator we need to train it with both uh, uh the original data set as well as the generated images from the generator so how do you train this gans training gan means uh, it is the training the generated part because that is the uh, key network that uh, gives output in the new samples and discriminator is trained separately discriminator is just uh, assisting the generator to learn uh, from the input uh, training set very well so it expect the we expect the generator to produce the real images so uh, when you are training the gan means uh, you have the generator followed by the uh, discriminator and when you are training the generator when you are trying to update the weights of the generator uh, then you have to set the output as one the real uh, because uh, all of you know that uh, uh, normally through the back propagation learning algorithm uh, the network learns so we have to set the output target so the target is set to one when you train the generator because the generator always thinks that it is generating a real data <clears throat> so set the expected output of the discriminator to one when training the generator so this uh, discriminator you will have uh, some network it is just a uh, network which outputs one or zero it's the classifier but uh, when you are training the generator this discriminator will not be uh, uh, will not get updated so actually the training loop goes like this so initially we set the discriminator trainable so first you set the discriminator trainable so train the discriminator with uh, data set as real images as well as uh, the generated or fake images so the discriminator is uh, input with uh, the real data set images as well as the uh, generated images and uh, when you set the output you for uh, real data set image you set the output as one and uh, uh, do the back propagation to adjust the weights when it uh, when it is uh, given the input from the generator then you set the output as zero and uh, through back propagation we will uh, update the weights of the discriminator and the step 3 is uh, now uh, the discriminator is uh, uh, first you are training the discriminator and you are updating the weights of the discriminator and then uh, you set the discriminator as a non trainable one and uh, you just train the generator so the, you have to train the generator as part of the gan when it comes to training the generator means you have to attach the discriminator which is uh, uh, a partly trained one uh because uh, in this case uh, we are alternatively training the generator as well as the discriminator one after another so the discriminator is set non trainable and the generator is uh, trained to classify the image so the generator and the discriminator are alternatively trained and the loop continues until the generator loss is low so when you look at this kind of training you can see that there is a adversary that means uh, when you are training the generator its output is set to 1 but when you are training the discriminator in the previous case when you are training the discriminator the generator's input is set to 0 so uh, it is uh, uh, here the discriminator always say uh, things that the generator is not uh, uh, outputting a proper image so slowly the discriminator is more or less like uh, a teacher and uh, 
this uh, it will give the advice it will uh, uh, generator you are not uh, your output is not proper so but the generator always thinks that its output is proper so that is that's why it is called adversary so the last function looks like this i am not going into the detail of this last function but uh, it is actually the discriminator tries to maximize the cross entropy because when it comes to the discriminator you have both the generated output generated input as well as the uh, training data input so that's why you have both uh, these uh, terms so e is the expectation and x is the uh, uh, input actual uh, uh, training data uh, so and g of z is uh, z is the noise and g of z is uh, uh, the generated output when it comes to the generator it actually minimizes this uh, function so this is the last function uh, that uh, uh, one is maximizing and one is minimizing the log function that's why it is called a minima minimax that is in adversarial search you have this minimax function so uh, here is an example for the digit uh, generator from generated from the noise okay i will run this you can see the this is these are the generated images after the generator is trained with the uh, mnist data set which consists of hand written characters you can see uh, slowly uh, the, these are the generated uh, images and initially the generated images are very bad and uh, slowly it is uh, shaping up so after uh, several iterations this initially uh, in, in the initial few iterations if you look at this uh, this is totally a noise after a few iteration there is some information available but it is not you cannot recognize the num uh, digits and uh, slowly if you see uh, you can try to recognize the digits at least uh, but it is still blurred and uh, distorted one and after several iterations you can see uh, you can get uh, very good numbers and you can easily recognize those numbers there are many variations in the gan the basic gan takes the input as the noise so the basic gan the generator is trained with a particular data set training data set and uh, it will be allowed to generate uh, similar samples uh, when a noise is given when some random noise is given as input and but uh, there are many other variations uh, one is the conditional gan where uh if you want to generate a particular number uh, instead of because uh, you have in the training data uh, training data can have uh, uh, samples with many classes uh, if it is digit uh, you have 10 different classes 0 to 9 if it is uh, uh, some animal images then uh, uh, there may be some few animals uh, uh, some 20 animal pictures if you have then uh, each one is uh, um, is a particular class so if you want to get a sample the generated sample if you want to get uh, a particular class sample then you have to give as input to the generator the class value also so the generator takes the class value also as input both the discriminator as well as the generator takes not only the sample uh, so the discriminator takes the, from the training data it takes the sample as well as the class information and generator it will take the class information and the noise okay so i think i am still uh, audible isn't it sir okay hello yes ma'am you are audible please continue okay i received some message that's why i am checking uh, so we have uh, uh, the samples we have the class information also 
uh, given to the uh, generator as well as the discriminator. And there are many applications for this GAN. One important application is the image translation. Here, what you, uh, is done is one kind of image is translated to another type of image. So here we are giving the uh, uh, input as one image itself. It is not the noise and uh, just the class values, but we are giving the input as one kind of image and that image is translated to another kind of image. For example, if you're giving the zebra image and it will be translated to a uh, horse image like this. So the training will be done with uh, zebra as well as the horse images and uh, it will try to extract uh, uh, how the zebra image looks and uh, accordingly when it, uh, how the horse uh, image also looks. So accordingly it will generate the image uh, where uh, the zebra is uh, exactly translated to a horse. And it is also useful for uh, photo editing. Photo editing is uh, uh, if you are given one photo, uh, photo of a person or anything, uh, it will try to change uh, the photo to a uh, different uh, uh, pose. So here uh, the Clinton's image is given and, uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Trump. Uh, so his image is given and uh, uh, it is converted to a female image as well as uh, it is converted to a young person. Uh, and uh, a smiling trunk, okay? And uh, you can also uh, generate the image uh, uh, to predict the aging. So when you are given the uh, um, face of one person, uh, how he looks in some other age, uh, some 80s, uh, how he looks and in uh, 70s, how he looks. So it will be trained with both uh, um, that 80s image as well as uh, the present uh, looking person image. And uh, accordingly, it will extract. Uh, so most of the 80s image uh, will look uh, bald. So, and uh, there will be shrink uh, in the face, uh, skin of the face. So uh, it will uh, tr try to receive the appropriate information and uh, uh, that information is uh, uh, when a new person is uh, uh, input uh, to the generator, then how he looks in the 80s, it will give. That is the image to image translation. For this kind of uh, image to image translation, there is one kind of uh, uh, GAN, which is called the PIX to PIX GAN. It is uh, actually published in 2017. So this uh, pix to pix GAN, it is nothing but the generator is a encoder and decoder logic. So the input to the generator, the encoder will take the input to the generator and it encodes and then tries to decode. So here you can see uh, the one kind of image translation where uh, the input is a road scene image and the output is a uh, segmented road scene. So when you are giving the pairs of images like this, the, in the case of image translation, you have to give the pairs of images and uh, you train the GAN in such a way that the pairs will be, uh, when a new image is input, its corresponding pair will be given as output. So it actually uses a conditional GAN for this. So the generator input here in this case is a RGB image and uh, the discriminator input is a, a segmented uh, image. So the PIX to uh, PIX, this, this kind of GAN is mainly useful for this image to image translation. And uh, there are different types of translation. So it, it's not only the segmentation, but also if you are giving, in the case of remote sensing, if you are giving the uh, satellite image, you can get the uh, a map of the image. So initially it will be trained with the pairs of uh, satellite image and its uh, map, corresponding map. And uh, in the, a new map can be generated when a new image is input. And uh, you can even, uh, if you are giving uh, a edge image like this, it will generate a, a nice uh, colorful uh, image like this.
So the pics to pics, uh, in the case of pics to pics, you have to give the pair of images. Uh, sometimes the pairs uh, will not be available uh, that easily. Uh, so uh, there is a small variation uh, to this kind of image to image translation, which is called the cycle GAN, uh, which is uh, mainly useful when the pairs are not available. You have only this kind of edge images and you have uh, the original uh, photographs. Uh, and uh, uh, you can give this, uh, instead of pairing the images and giving it for training, you can give all these images, edge images together and all these uh, things together and train the network. That is called the uh, cycle GAN. And uh, uh, this is called the, un this is actually a paired image. And uh, when it comes to this, uh, it's the unpaired image. This is actually uh, the painting. Uh, this one is, uh, you will have several painting images and you will have several photographs. And uh, uh, if you are tra training again with this uh, cycle again with this set of images, then it will automatically uh, know how the painting will look and how the actual photograph looks. So when a photograph is given, the painting and uh, the corresponding painting will come as output. And when a painting is given, the corresponding photograph will come as input. So this was uh, actually published in 2017. So the cycle GAN works like this. It has both two generators and two discriminators. One is for translating from um, image type X to image type Y. And another is for translating from image type Y to image type X. So that's why it is two generators and two discriminators. So when you are giving a new image X, then you will get a X, um, predicted Y. And then again, it will, uh, uh, when you pass through this uh, another generator, it will give the, uh, you can reconstruct the image. So the cycle consistency loss is used for training the cycle again. So similarly, when you are giving the uh, Y image from the domain Y, and uh, you will get the predicted X as well as the uh, um, reconstructed Y, and the cycle consistency loss will be used. So these are the images uh, generated for uh, using a cycle GAN. Uh, so when you are giving an input uh, image as a winter image, uh, then you will get uh, a summer image uh, like this. So you can give several uh, winter images uh, and we cannot pair the images. That's, uh, yeah, that's why if you are giving so, so many winter images, when during winter you can take several images and during summer you can take several images and uh, train the network and uh, it, the network itself identifies winter looks like this and summer looks like this. And similarly, the sunny image and the rainy road. So the corresponding rainy image is here. And GAN is also useful for uh, one kind of arithmetic operation on the image domain. Uh, so uh, this uh, here you can see uh, these are the images mm, with man or man with glasses and sorry, men with glasses, you can say. And uh, these are the Im images of men without glasses. Uh, so uh, we can do some arithmetic operation on the image. Uh, that is uh, this set of image minus this set of image. So naturally uh, what is missing is the uh, uh, glasses. So the glasses will come as the output. So when you are uh, giving a women image without glasses, then it will generate uh, the women image with glasses. So this kind of uh, arithmetic cooperation can also be uh, uh, done on the images using GAN. So let us go to the remote sensing applications. Uh, so different kinds of GANs we have looked into. And uh, now the remote sensing applications, image uh, translation is one thing. And uh, gap filling is another thing. That means uh, you want to generate a sample. Uh, so suppose uh, uh, if it is a multispectral uh, uh, image, it, has, it is uh, affected by clouds. Uh, so a SOAR image, you can generate the multispectral from the SOAR image. Uh, so that is the gap filling in the time series. 
and cloud removal also can be done in the multispectral images the cloud can be removed using a, some kind of gan and uh, super resolution you are giving an input image as a low resolution image you will get a super resolution image and enhancement uh, the image will get enhanced even for classification it is used and for the segmentation also and object detection these are all normally uh, deep other deep learning networks are useful for this purpose uh, classification when you look in uh, when you uh, consider the cnn type of uh, networks it is useful for classification and segmentation and object detection you must have seen all these things in the yesterday's class lecture but now the gan is also used for this in the image translation when it comes to the remote sensing application uh, we have this uh, this uh, uh, you have the SOAR image and uh, from the SOAR image you can get the optical image that is possible using this. Uh, that's why if you want to do the gap filling this kind of translation will be helpful. So this is uh, published uh, recently in 2020 and uh, Yeah, uh, here you can see that uh, the input is a SOAR image and the generator is nothing but it's a UNET. UNET is a encoder decoder network and uh, encoder de decoder network is normally useful for the image translation purpose. And this is the generated image from this uh, uh, SOAR image. And the discriminator is, uh, it will take the uh, uh, ground truth, that's the original images, and the generated image also it takes, and uh, it will be trained uh, for either classifying as real or fake. And you get the loss, uh, that loss will be useful for uh, training the generator. This is another work where uh, you can see uh, this is again a image translation work where uh, you are getting a NIR image from the RGB image uh, because uh, uh, this NIR sensor is somewhat expensive. Uh, so one can use uh, the RGB image to convert to the NIR images. So here uh, you are uh, uh, having the multispectral image from which the RGB uh, image is derived and then the NIR image is also uh, taken from this. And uh, uh, you have a pix to pix uh, This is a recently published one. It's in uh, journal, Canadian Journal of Remote Sensing 2022 work. And uh, they are using the pix to pix which is the uh, useful for the image translation purpose. So the pix to pix is useful for from one domain to another domain alone. Cycle GAN is useful for translating in both, both uh, domains. So pix to pix generator and a discriminated training is done. And then the NIR is estimated here. Here, uh, uh, once the training is over, uh, then this pix to pix uh, generator, the trained generator is useful for uh, um, getting the uh, NIR images from the RGB input image. Okay. Gap filling. Uh, gap filling is again, it's one kind of image translation work only. Uh, so uh, here uh, in a recent uh, 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 publication it is used for uh, the gap filling is done for the soil moisture estimation so here what they are doing is uh, they are trying to estimate the soil moisture uh, from sentinel 1 and sentinel 2 images both images <laughs> so both these images are available 
So the uh, in the case of Sentinel-2 image, uh, uh, some of them will be affected by clouds. Uh, so, uh, but we want the uh, time series uh, uh, because we want to estimate the soil moisture from both the time series images. So some of them are uh, um, affected by clouds. Uh, so you can do the gap filling by translating using a cycle GAN to translate the uh, uh, Sentinel-1 image to the Sentinel-2 uh, image. And uh, it's not only one image. Sometimes uh, if there is any missing uh, data in the Sentinel-1 image also, it can be uh, uh, recovered. So a cycle GAN is used for uh, translation. And then it is followed by a auto encoder. Uh, so this is one auto encoder for uh, uh, the Sentinel-1. And this is another auto encoder for uh, uh, Sentinel-2. You all know that the auto encoder is trained with uh, the same, uh, the input as well as the output will be the same for the auto encoder. And it will do the encoding. So that means uh, it, uh, from the uh, uh, bigger image, you will get uh, a small uh, set of features. So those uh, encoded features from both this auto encoder, they are, uh, it is concatenated to estimate uh, yeah, uh, the soil moisture. That is the work done here for which uh, they are using the gap filling uh, followed by uh, this kind of uh, auto encoder for extracting the uh, smaller set of features and then it is used for the estimating the soil moisture. <coughs> so cloud removal is another uh, thing that is uh, uh, done by this um, tra image translation. This is again one kind of image uh, translation only. Uh, so, uh, you have uh, this image with uh, uh, some sparse cloud, it is not very dense cloud. So, if uh, such image is available, then uh, when it is passed through this cloud GAN, it will give a image with, uh, uh, with a uh, clean image. So, uh, this work is, uh, this cloud GAN is proposed in 2018 where uh, it uses again a cyclic GAN. So they used uh, uh, cyclic GAN for generating some cloudy images uh, they have given to the GAN and uh, also the clean images they have given to the GAN and use that for training so that it will pick up uh, what is meant by cloud here and uh, the GAN will try to identify the cloud and it will try to replace that with the um, actual background image. So the, this is the, the uh, cyc uh, cyclic GAN, where uh, the cyclic GAN I have already uh, told you that uh, it has two discriminators and two generators. So, and GAN is also useful for image enhancement. That means uh, when a low quality image is given as input, uh, then it will synthesize the high quality image. So the network will be uh, trained with both uh, low quality and high quality uh, images. And that is useful for generating when a new low quality image is given, then the high quality image can be derived. So this is uh, the network here. So all of them, they all belong to this image translation. Uh, so noise is not input to the GAN. Most of the remote sensing work, uh, the noise is not input to the GAN. When noise is input to the GAN, then uh, it will generate random samples that is mainly useful for data augmentation purpose. But uh, all other work like this, uh, cloud removal and uh, uh, translating from one sensor image to another, they are all uh, using the GAN, which is mostly cyclic GAN or fix to fix GAN. So GAN is also used uh, in the image classification. Uh, one work is uh, in 2018, this uh, work uh, 
is uh, performing the hyperspectral image classification. So uh, this is the hyperspectral image uh, where uh, some principal components are derived from this uh, hyperspectral image and that is uh, given as input to the GAN. And uh, uh, this is the generated part and uh, uh, the class labels are also given as input because it's a classification problem. So uh, you have the input image as well as the class label to the generator. So the generator takes both uh, the input images and the class label uh, for training. But uh, later, uh, once the generator is trained, when you give the input image alone, it will give the corresponding class. And uh, here in this work, uh, they are not giving the entire hyperspectral image, but uh, they have derived the principal components from this hyperspectral image, and that is given as the input to the GAN. So they are doing the classification on the principal components. And this is the discriminated part. So the output is uh, for the, uh, this, the discriminator output, normally it is a real or fake, isn't it? but uh, it will give the class output also. Because it's a classification problem, it is giving the class output also. It is trained in such a way that it should give the class output as well. <clears throat> there is one another work in remote sensing which uh, in which the GAN is used for uh, building segmentation. Uh, they call this as WOGAN. OGAN is orthogonal GAN. Yeah, orthogonal in the sense uh, one is orthogonal to another, isn't it? So that means here one GAN, there are, there are two types of GAN used. One GAN learns the buildings from the images and the other GAN learns the background from the images. So different background images, some um, uh, uh, the background can be anything. Uh, it can be a mountain terrain or it can be a sandy place or plain land or grassland. So several types of background is available. So the GAN will understand what kind of background are available. And then uh, it is also given one more, another GAN is given with building images so that it will try to understand what type of buildings are. So it is not only in this uh, work, uh, they not only uh, extract the buildings, but also they extract, uh, they, they classify the what kind of building it is. So this is the orthogonal GAN they used for, one for the background and one for uh, training with the building. And uh, when a new image is given with both background as well as the, uh, um, uh, buildings in it, it will try to extra segment only the building part and even classify them. So this is the output result of that kind of GAN. Uh, here, uh, so here the aerial images are given and which has uh, different background as well. Uh, and uh, the ground truth is uh, given like this. So the segmented buildings, uh, this act, the, these are the segmented buildings. This is the ground truth, but this is the uh, segmented output that is uh, given by the GAN. Uh, the GAN segments uh, the uh, building alone. <laughs> and it also categorizes the building. Uh, so it categorizes the building as uh, something like residential office building and uh, go downs like that. So there is one another GAN which is uh, into a 2020 they used for uh, <coughs> object detection. Uh, so the GAN is uh, nowadays useful for classification, object detection, and uh, uh, segmentation. So we have uh, seen some examples for all these things. So this object detection uh, here it is done like this. They used a edge enhanced GAN and a detector network. So they use uh, both the networks. One is the GAN or GAN as well as the detector network. Detector network you must have seen yesterday. 
Uh, so uh, there are many object detection networks like uh, YOLO, SST, like that, faster or CNN. So here, uh, what they do is, uh, uh, if you are using only the object detector network, then if uh, the image, uh, the resolution is very poor, then the detection performance is poor. So for that purpose, what they do is that the low resolution image is uh, converted to a very good high resolution image, like super resolution image that is done by the GAN. And then it is followed by a detector network. So your object detection performance will get improved. So the E GAN, the edge enhanced GAN, this generates a super resolution image from a low resolution image. The GAN looks like uh, this entire circuit looks like this. Uh, here you have a generator uh, where uh, the input to the generator is a low resolution image and uh, it is giving some intermediate uh, super resolution image. Uh, and uh, from this, uh, there is a edge enhancement network. There is one another network edge enhancement network. And uh, uh, after using this edge enhancement network, you are getting a, really a super resolution image. Uh, initially, it will give only a, a, a somewhat high resolution. I don't call it a super resolution. So intermediate super resolution or it can be called as a high resolution. And after this edge enhancement, you get the super resolution image. Once the edge uh, of the objects are enhanced and you get a super resolution image, then when it is passed through the uh, detector network uh, like YOLO or SST, it will give a nice uh, detection performance. So here uh, you have the discriminator also. So uh, the discriminator is actually uh, trained with a high resolution image because uh, here the generator is uh, uh, generating a high resolution image. This is a separate network, uh, uh, which is the uh, edge enhanced enhancement network. <laughs> so the main purpose of this en edge enhancement network that uh, is coming in between this uh, generator and the uh, uh, detector uh, is uh, it looks like this where uh, uh, it receives a high resolution image which is generated by the generator and uh, it uh, extracts the edge that is the Laplacian operator. Uh, so it extracts the edge and uh, it subtracts this edge. You will get uh, this subtracted image is given here and uh, this whatever the edge that is extracted that is passed through a sequence of uh, uh, network blocks and uh, it will do the enhancement, the edge enhanced image is this. Uh, then this edge enhanced image is um, <coughs> added to this image to get a super resolution image. So it is just uh, uh, extracting the edge from the high resolution image and it will, uh, um, uh, it will uh, refine that image and uh, uh, so that the edges are enhanced and then uh, that output image is a super resolution image. So they use it for the score detection. So this is a remote sensing image uh, uh, taken from the top, which is a low resolution image normally uh, taken from satellite. It is not that high resolution. And uh, this is the uh, super resolution image that is uh, generated by the GAN. So these two are the super resolution image generated by the GAN and on which uh, the detection is supplied and uh, you can get uh, all the cores detected there. But if you are applying this core detection, if uh, on this image, uh, it is very difficult uh, to extract all the cores. But after pausing through this, uh, after uh, uh, making this low resolution to super resolution, 
and then given to the detector network, then the core detection is done very well. So how the GAN can be implemented? We have several uh, uh, frameworks to implement the GAN. Uh, so the MATLAB also has its own uh, framework. So it's uh, its own uh, function for implementing the GAN. And we have the Python libraries, uh, uh, which is available as TensorFlow package as and Keras package, as well as the PyTorch. Uh, so all of them have uh, uh, the uh, uh, functions for implementing the GAN. In the MATLAB, if you uh, look into the MATLAB, you have one example, which, uh, uh, which is a basic GAN uh, where the noise is given. This is given as one example. If you are uh, working with uh, MATLAB, uh, this you can try it out. So this, uh, it receives the um, input as noise and then it generates uh, the image. This is the basic GAN. And uh, the generator network is, uh, it's a simple uh, generator network with uh, multiple convolutional layers. And uh, discriminator network is again uh, a simple network with multiple convolutional layers. And the code is actually available here. <coughs> and they used it for uh, the training the flower images. Uh, so they have different flower images and uh, they use uh, the GAN for training several, uh, the flower images. And the basic GAN, when in uh, the trained network, when the noise is given, it will uh, output uh, uh, different flower samples. So here is the uh, data set image. Uh, these are the data set images. Uh, the images are very good, but uh, these are the generated images in this case a little bit blurred only the generated images maybe the training has to be improved and uh, in the tensor flow uh, you have one uh, this example you have so in the TensorFlow package, you have this example. It's a deep convolutional GAN to generate the handwritten digits. That's what we have seen before. Uh, so the handwritten digits will be uh, uh, generated. That also you can run and check. So actually, uh, this is the noise input. And this is the actually the data set images, uh, which are very clear. But uh, uh, after, uh, yeah, in the first iteration, this again, uh, it's uh, using the basic GAN. So uh, in the first uh, iteration, you get images like this. And then after uh, 10 epochs, you get uh, this kind of image. 20 epochs, you have this. So you cannot recognize the character still. Uh, but after 50 epochs, you have something like this. Maybe uh, if the epochs are increased, then you can get uh, uh, better characters. And you have one example for cycle gain also. Uh, this is that uh, zebra to uh, horse conversion. So if you are input a zebra image, it will be converted to horse. And if you are input the horse image, it will be converted to uh, zebra. Yeah, for which the encoder decoder type of generator is used. And the discriminator is just a fully connected uh, uh, layer where uh, the output is uh, it has uh, several convolutional layers and followed by a fully connected layer. It's a simple CNN only, a discriminator, and uh, where the output is either real or fake. And in the TensorFlow package, uh, uh, yeah, you have this uh, cycle GAN example from Kaggle, uh, where uh, 
uh, it is converting the input image, which is a photograph, to a painting. So these are the input photos, and these are the uh, painting images, corresponding painting. This they call it as monet type painting. So these are the references for Gan. Uh, Ian Goodfellow is the person who has developed this Gan. So uh, his reference is very useful. So he is uh, he published the first work in this. Uh, Neural Information Processing uh, Systems Conference. And he has written a book, Deep Learning, uh, so in 2016. And then uh, there are many other uh, GAN uh, books available. Uh, this is one GANs in action, this. Yeah, thank you.